In the last video, we learned how we could take a graph and determine what degree polynomial models it by counting the number of turning points or bumps on the graph. In this video, we're going to learn how we can take a table of data, so just a standard input-output table, and we can actually use that table and figure out A, if a polynomial models it at all, so if there's an equation for a polynomial that goes along with the table, and B, we can actually decide exactly what degree polynomial it's going to be. This is a process called finite differences, and it's kind of tough to put in words in terms of like a set of steps. So it's kind of something I'm just going to kind of show you guys by example. So we have a table of numbers right here, and this purple note is kind of important because it tells us whether or not we can even use this process. In order to do finite differences, your x's need to change by a constant rate. That basically means your x need to be going up by the same number each time, or I suppose down by the same number each time. If you look at this, negative 5 plus 3 gets us to here, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. We're going up by 3 each time on the x's, so these are going by a constant rate of 3. So that's good. That means we can do this process. If these numbers would have been jumbled where it didn't just go up by the same number each time, you just couldn't do the thing I'm going to teach you in this video. So always do a quick check to make sure the x's are going up by a constant rate. And what I'm going to do now is look at my y's. Find a difference focus on the y's in your table. And I'm going to do the same sort of thing I breezed through on the x's here. I'm going to look at how much you go up or down to get from the num one number to the next. And I'm going to draw like little, I don't know, curvy lines here between the um, different numbers. So I have to go from negative 23 to negative 14. In order to do that, I need to go up by 9. So this is up 9 to get there. Let's put a little plus 9 there. If I want to go from negative 14 to negative 5, again, I'm going up by 9. Negative 5 to positive 4 is another up 9. This is up 9. And this is up 9 as well. If you sometimes like with problems like this, you probably just look at that and see how much you're going up or down by. If you can't figure it out though, like if you didn't know what this plus what gets me here, all you do is you subtract the number below from the number above. So for example, in that first one, I could do negative 14 minus it's negative 23. And if I actually subtract one from the other, it'll give me a positive 9. If I did negative 5 minus negative 14, it gets me a 9. So you can also just do the number minus the one above it to figure out what goes right here. Now when we did this problem, notice that we got the exact same number each time we did it. That number matched. That's good. That means that our finite difference process is done. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing this process here and seeing how many times we have to try until our number matches. So the number of tries, oops, the number of tries, and by tries, I mean this whole thing here was one try. So the number of tries until you match is the degree of the polynomial. So you're going to keep doing this process until you get the same number every single time. Like we got all those nines. That's going to be the degree of your polynomial. So in our example right here, this table of data is degree. It matched on the first try. So we are degree one, which is linear. So in other words, if you were to plot that table of data, it would make a line. It worked on the first try. That means it's degree one, which is linear. Let's look at two more tables. So we have our top table right there. And the first thing you always do when you look at you're doing finite differences, if I say the instructions on this, by the way, um, it's on the last slide here, but you haven't seen it for a little bit. The question would say something like this blue thing right here. What degree polynomial will model my table of data, models this table of data? So we're looking for what degree polynomial this is going to be. And when you see the table, you should think finite differences. First thing we do is we look at our x's to make sure they go up by the same amount. Up by 2, up by 2, up by 2, 2, 2. We're good, so we can do the problem. Now, we're going to do that same thing here, but some of these numbers are a little bigger. It may be tougher for you to actually just look at that and see what you're doing. Clearly, we're going up to go from negative 62 to negative 14, but we don't know exactly how much. All you do is negative 14 minus negative 62. 
and my calculator gives me a 48 here, which makes sense because if you go up 48, you will get to here. For my next number, negative 14 to 2, this one I'm going to do mentally, that's just going to be going up 16. Then I go from 2 down to negative 14. That's actually going to be going down, so that's a negative 16 right there. I went down, so it's negative. And again, if you check that, negative 14 minus 2, you do in fact get negative 16. And you do the same sort of thing right here. To go from here to here, we go down 48. And on this last one here again, if you're not sure, just negative 142 minus negative 62, we are going down 80. So, obviously, we do not have the same number here. Like on the last one, it was all nines. This is not the same number, so we are not done with our problem. What we're going to do now is actually take these red numbers, and we're going to do the finite difference process on the red numbers. So if it doesn't match, you just do it again. This is my second try now, and I'm going to do it on the red numbers here. So to go from 48 to 16, again, I can just do 16 minus 48. I'm going down 32. To go from 16 to negative 16, I go down 32, down 32, down 32. And on the second try, my numbers did match. Didn't match the red, but it did on the purple. It matched on the second try. That means this is going to be degree 2. So the polynomial that models this, remember degree 2 is a quadratic. Apparently, if you plot all these points here, they're going to make a nice parabola, and there is a quadratic equation. I'm going to try to um, go a little faster through this one, so I will not spend as much time talking about it, just so you guys can see it in action here. Uh, maybe even try this one for yourself and see where you can get with things. So I ended up deciding, guys, to edit this part and just jump straight to the end so you didn't have to see me do all these numbers. Um, on this problem, if you do the same process here, which you should try this one, you'll see that you do get it works on the third try. That means it's degree three or a cubic equation.